you've got to talk about what makes this Ram so exciting. Okay, besides the fact that it's gorgeous. I mean, we're looking at it right here, right, right now. now. And, and really a big shout out to the to the Newegg tech crew here, giving us this really awesome open, I mean, because this, this is a pretty hot spec gaming PC and it's just open and it's totally silent, which makes me super excited. Mm -hmm. But my current PC is kind of a mess. Okay, this is why it's personal for you. Yeah, this is totally why it's personal. So I'm at the, the sort of the end of life of my current workstation and just upgrades over time, okay. it's totally a Frankenbox. So I want to get back to something that has a more cohesive design aesthetic. Okay. And over the couple, last couple of years that we've been playing with different products, it's gotten way easier to incorporate lighting into your build. Let's just talk about that for a second. Yes, it used to be so difficult to change the lights in your system. Oh, yeah. And now, thanks to software, it's much more simple. And, and direct plug and play. So RGB, red, green, blue, mm -hmm. uh, they're these, uh, these individual LEDs are built directly into these uh, sticks of RAM. And then a simple program on your desktop is going to communicate with that RAM so that you can match lighting, you can have uh, mm -hmm. different uh, color effects, strobe effects. So this is called the RGB control. And I'm going to jump into this G-Scale. I'm doing this live. And uh, this uh, this is we've this is in beta. So we have There's had no a few. There's no room for error. It has to be perfect the first I'm, time. I'm, I'm, I'm totally without a net here. And I just want to. But what, what's really cool is, so we've got, you know, it's set on red right now. Mm -hmm. We've got a really simple interface for adjusting color. So let's say I just want to do something like I wanted blue build. Okay. Um, I'm going to just shift over my little color wheel. I'm going to click this little button so that all of the lights on each stick of RAM are going to be blue. I hit apply. Wait just a sec, and it flips over into blue. And it's blue. Super easy, super clean. And you can also control the sort of the intensity of the color, the intensity of the lighting, and then different effects. So I really like breathing effects, very subtle glow in, glow out kinds of effects. And you can apply that very simple, very easy. And it's just going to let very slowly and 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 you know, like just it. pulse through the color uh, color wheel. I think for my build, I'm going to go black and green. Okay. I think, I think I'm going to go green for my next uh, for black my next and PC green build. is a very popular PC color combo. <laughs> so I mean, you can flip it over into green. And then what I want to do here is let's actually just do, uh, I'm going to do like a quick little rainbow effect. Oh, so this is going to take so me fancy. just a sec to go through. Okay, each no, individual perfect. Absolutely, diode. do that. So. Each stick of RAM will have multiple colors on it, and that's that's what you're customizing right now. And let's go with uh, let's go flash and dash. I, okay. I like the sound of that. And we'll apply it. And <laughs> I mean, look at that. I mean, you can get your Night Rider on. It's good times. <laughs> Kit Night Industries 2010. It's a uh, it's it's really cool. But um, this is uh, what I really like is again when I started doing PC builds, if we wanted to customize with colors and cases, it was all about matching hardwired mm -hmm. colored fans with hardwired colored uh, motherboard accents. You'd actually have to sometimes run your own LED strips. And now this stuff communicates really well. I know on Asus boards, um, mm -hmm. was the Asus Aura uh, software, will communicate with the same setup so that you can match awesome. the colors on your motherboard. Very easy, very simple. It's, it's, it, this is so much so much friendlier. It also enables you to be a little bit fickle if you want to change your mind every <laughs> couple months. You can totally completely accurate. do that. I might not stay black and green forever. There you go. I get it. Um, but this is also, I mean, it's more than just gorgeous RAM. It's also really, really fast, nice RAM. Totally. So let's break it down. Uh, basics for people who are maybe just getting into the world of PC building. Yeah. Juan, can you tell us what RAM actually does in a PC? Yes. So RAM is a type of memory, but it's not your storage, like a hard drive or a solid state drive. Mm -hmm. uh, RAM is your sort of workspace. So if we imagined RAM as being like a desk, like this big desk that we have in front okay. of us here, the bigger the desk you have, the more things you can keep on that desk at one time. You can kind of multitask, keep things going, and that's what RAM does. So it allows you to keep more programs running at any given time to dedicate those resources for really fast data access and data transfer. I like that analogy a lot. Very simple, yeah, very clean. It's very simple. And that's what's kind of cool about this is that it's not just pretty RAM, it is fast. It's also RAM. really fast. Um, so what does RAM specifically do for someone who's a gamer? Well, I mean, you could probably even speak to this a little bit better because I because I know you're you're doing a lot of game streaming. So not only do you yeah. need a, a powerful PC just to run the game, right? You, you also need to have 
other you, things running in the background. If you're doing a one PC stream setup, which I normally do, um, yeah, you've got to run the game. You've got to broadcast from the same PC. I also will have open my Twitch dashboard and stream elements or whatever I'm using for my Twitch alerts. Um, and I use Chrome, which is very, uh, very so intensive. So Trisha needs 18 terabytes of RAM yeah. for her Chrome browser. Yeah, I believe True that's story. an exact figure. Exact. I, I read that in a book somewhere. But no, I mean, it, that is very RAM intensive. And totally. you do a lot of video and editing work. Oh, which yeah. also requires a ton of Yeah, and, and again, keeping your timeline up. Mm -hmm. I'm editing a lot of 4K video now. We're getting into HEVC. That's kind of heavy on system requirements. And so moving back and forth between those different environments, keeping all of my stuff running smooth, the timeline, all that stuff lives in RAM. So again, not only the the better to have more, also kind of nice to have faster RAM. Indeed. So one of the things that we want to take a look at, and again, we're doing this live, so apologies if this kind of blows up in my face. <laughs> First <laughs> um, is uh, we're going to take a look at this. This G-Skill RAM is rated at a faster clock speed than what uh, CPUs normally sort of utilize RAM at. And this is, I think, an important thing for, again, maybe the less experienced PC builders in our audience, is uh, just because you've purchased expensive fast RAM doesn't necessarily mean that you're getting that speed. Right. And so we want to make sure that you know, you're, you're getting into those system settings and enabling the features that you paid for. So um, you, you vamp for just a second, because I'm going to okay. reboot this computer and try and get into the uh, UEFI oh. to, to adjust some settings. And uh, this is usually not something that I do. Okay, a whole right. lot of. yeah, this is this is always a well. Let's see if it works the first time. I'm hitting restart. Um, so yeah, so Juan's getting into the UEFI, also known to some as BIOS, but there is actually a difference between BIOS and UEFI. Um, UEFI is is newer, and normally, if you've got a, a mouse access in there, you can assume it's UEFI. Um, get the BIOS, get I the BIOS. personally have only ever messed around with BIOS, uh, nice, with Damn. BIOS and UEFI settings um, when it comes to troubleshooting situations. Exactly. If I have a virus or if something went wrong in an update of some sort and I need to fix things. So this is always kind of a scary area for me to mess around with. Oh, me too. <laughs> I, I tend to not, I mean, I build workstations. I'm, I'm kind of just getting my, getting back into like planning a PC build that's a little bit more even work and play, yeah. Um, but this is one of the things that we definitely want to take into consideration. And uh, so you can't ship a product that has a sort of an expected use beyond normal factory settings. Uh, the manufacturer doesn't know what kind of system that product is going to be used in, if it has adequate cooling, sure. if it's got enough power. And so this is something when you do pick up something like this Trident Z RAM that we're going to have a special promo code for here in just a bit, um, <laughs> you might actually need to activate it. But it's so much easier than it, than it used to be. Back when I was tinkering with overclocking, there was a lot of like setting memory timings, rebooting the computer, did it just go to instant blue screen of death, no got to go back into the BIOS. Mm -hmm. Well, now the RAM and the motherboard do a much better job of talking to each other. And so this is this is really easy. OK, show us how to do it in real time. I, I need to adjust my mouse uh, sensitivity. OK. It's really, ah, there we go. OK, so we're literally going to go into a setting. Now, this is on a gigabyte motherboard. Uh, your mileage may vary in what this looks like, whether or not it's called a BIOS or UEFI, but a lot of uh, especially high-end components manufacturers will have something very similar to this. But we're going to go into our advanced memory settings, mm -hmm. and literally right at the top is extreme memory profile because it's extreme. <laughs> oh, okay. For you know extreme performance. <laughs> um, but if we look, it's currently disabled, and our clock speed uh, twenty-one thirty-three megahertz. Okay. I'm literally just going to say activate the profile. It's not this easy. And it's gonna, we're going to see that jump to 3,200 megahertz. That's and, awesome. And so we don't have to mess with those different, like I mean, back when it was a big deal what front side bus your chipset had and all of that mess. And you would have to work out those timings. And you were driving components well beyond their sort of factory rated use. G-Skill has said, we have binned this memory to operate at a higher frequency but again, you have to go in there and make sure that that setting is active. And it's literally that easy now. That's incredible that it's so easy. Now, a jump in frequency like that, what kind of difference is that going to make when you're looking at things gaming-wise? I, I mean, I, I think, you know, improving the clock speed on RAM, we'd be looking at at least 700 extra frames per second in something like Witcher. Okay. True story. Perfect. I'm totally lying. <laughs> That's not true. I apologize. No. Mm -mm. Um, so. 
again, I, I like to look at PC builds holistically. Sure. Just improving the clock speed on RAM might only have a real world benefit of one or two frames per sure. second. Something that's that would literally be within the margin of error in a lot of benchmarking situations. But what we're looking at here, especially with the rig that our techs put together for yeah. us, you're considering every part of the chain. You're looking at a super hot solid state drive. You're looking at a great motherboard chipset combination. Mm -hmm. You're looking at great cooling, especially quiet cooling. You can keep your PC on the desk. All of those things go hand in hand with taking your workstation or your desktop up above just an off the shelf PC that's good for office documents and web browsing and yeah. into a territory where you can really drive high resolution, high frame rate experience.